All right, welcome back. It's time for us to have a conversation um, about roads. Mm. And now, it is the year of roads. Again. Uh, yes, this, this is the second, the second year one. of roads. Yes, I know. Um, but as we talk about roads, there are different kinds of conditions that uh, different roads find themselves in. Um, what I have never really particularly understood, though, is how we um, have a small pothole the assembly in the area doesn't deal with it and then it becomes some impossible situation and now you know we have to pull all kinds of resources from wherever to come and fix a huge problem which could have been stopped much earlier mm. you know i don't get it anyway uh, we do have um you know a, a situation that's going on in swami yeah yeah and um the swami roundabout to airport um, stretch in Kumase. Our colleague Hafiz Tijani um, is joining us and they're going to help us to get a sense of what is it exactly that is going on there. Hafiz, good morning. Good morning, David. Yes. So, how are you this morning, actually, on the last day of January? I'm well. How are you too? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. All right. So, Hafiz, give us a sense of what the challenge is actually, what the challenge is, what the challenge actually is that's going on there um, in the Swami roundabout airport stretch of the uh, Kumasi metropolis. So this is a busy road, mm. and of course, this road leads to the airport itself, the okay. Kumasi airport. Mm. It leads to the Tech Junction and to KNUST. So for people who are coming from Swami yeah. and other areas like mm. Bantima, this is where the main stretch they use to the Kumasi airport. Mm. For people who are also coming from the northern part of the country, this is the major road that leads you to Accra and other areas in the eastern region. Okay. And this problem of a gully that has devolved on a portion of a road just close to the airport runabout is raising a lot of concerns a lot of residents and road users are not happy about the situation here so the cameraman will just show you a typical example of the description we'll be making so you can see that there's a bridge and this gully has developed because it has not been given any attention or it has been given a little attention following persistent complaints by road users and other commuters this gully is eating into the road mm. so what happens is that drivers coming from Swami runabout to the airport runabout area have to drive very carefully mm. because if they don't take time they risk falling inside this gully for people who don't know about it so uh, recently, uh, there were some concerns by commuters and road users. So they had to bring in stones and other uh, signages to alert drivers who don't know about this situation so that when they are driving, they can drive carefully, they can slow down upon reaching this portion of the road that has developed the fault. And this is also a bridge that water passes to other areas uh, major areas like the Abuabo, the Subin areas. Okay. And when it's a rainy season, drivers are not able to use this road because this place is usually flooded. And uh, when it's flooded, the risk of drivers falling into hmm. this gully itself is very high for those yeah. who don't know about it. There have been some visits by the road ministry, the KMA, the Urban Roads Department, they have come here to inspect this. The assembly member, I have spoken to him, he says he has written a number of letters to the assembly to fix this problem, but that is not done. And this is posing a challenge because it continues to eat deep into the road. And if care is not taken, according to commuters, it's going to cause a disaster one day. Yeah. So um, do we have an idea of when the initial cracks and um, faults began to develop in the road 
Well, I spoke to some commuters. They say for about three years ago, wow. this thing started to develop mm. and they have been raising concerns. But because little attention has been paid to solving or addressing this issue, that has not been done. And that is making it difficult. And it's eating deep inside to the road. And uh, they are just worried about what will happen possibly. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's only a matter of time, um, Hafiz, I mean, from what you're saying. But from what we are seeing, you know, David made the comments earlier that it could have started off as something that could have easily been fixed, Great, yeah. patched up. Now you can only imagine the expense that will go into fixing this properly because it will need a lot of reinforcement yeah. to prevent the, the erosion into the road. But also, I don't know how well lit this road is at exactly. night. You can only imagine if someone is driving on this road at night. And they, like you said, they're not familiar with the road. They can't see properly. Only goodness knows. From where we sit, um, Hafiz, from where we sit, we don't see any street lights. Mm. Not, uh, behind one, you, there, there's no street. No, those are electric what's poles. Electric pole? Those are electric poles. Behind. Uh, 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 well, are there street lights on the road? Well, the... well, there are. Yes, there are lights that are erected on the portion of the road. Okay. Uh, so these street lights are not functioning. Uh, oh. Deep in the night, okay. drivers have to depend solely on their lights to be able to maneuver through. Mm. And Kokui was also talking about uh, how busy this place is at night. And I was just saying that this is a major road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, people coming from the north, you imagine the cargoes carrying or transporting goods to Accra and Tema. Mm. This is the only route they can use to... Uh, from Accra to Tamale or from Accra to Wale Wale or Bolga or Navrongo or Paga. Mm. And those coming from those areas, this is the only road they can use to Accra. There's no any other alternative. So this is a major road and it plays a key role in the transportation as far as the Ashanti region is concerned. I have some residents who are around here and uh, they want to join this discussion uh, they are not happy about the situation, according to them. Mm. They have complained a number of times, and this has not been fixed. Mm. Um, problem, um, problem, problem, I started uh, since John Mahama Mreso. And uh, it's your new year's had the announcement. John Mahama Nua Mubaha, one in the bodyguards, in the ministers. Every day, ti wo mu ko ye ni mi se wo mu ko no o mu be ya no enu ase ye hu se ke mu e de anwia e be gu emnanim rainy season sa ba ya ne be sa be yi ni nyina ya ka ho asem sa wo mu fi mrofu bi a be se cha na fo mu aba ho sa so stay na ye hu no hwe je wo ma ne sa ti fo bi ba ye ne sa ka ho asem no mu ko si sa e bu o wei a bone air doors of power cost a lot of money. Oh, we say, you shouldn't have any in our good for me, say. And now, the Akanum Penifolan Sakai and Ma, or Moses Saku, when Chamber Nessa, I hear waste. Oh, a lot of money, stone way, a cannon bois, and soon I hear waste. A cost we in our we Ghanaians. Tino Quabena, whom I first want my boy, and now, or my Mayan, I am my toy. I didn't know through. Eh, says, as then I see you will have a brain. Nan, we say, Motobi, I'm saying, one more boss, I want to buy ya. I hand ye a kituano, and no coda over Nassi. And I will train as a sir. I was saying, I pray for no more holiday. I report to buy. But now, one more better, I will hand you into a woman about whom no more fray, empty to you for no more bar. So uh, that was a resident who was just talking about the effects and he has been saying that a lot of authorities a number or a number of, uh, of authorities have come to this place trying to assess the situation he even mentioned that uh, some time ago former president john dramani mahama came here with 
uh, some ministers to inspect the place. Okay, Nothing Hafiz, has been done. Sorry, uh, if you some, can just hold on yeah. a second for us. We actually have the Ashanti Regional Director of Urban Roads on the line here. So we just want to talk with him quickly and then we'll, we'll come back to you. So Francis Gambra is the Ashanti Regional Director for Urban Roads. Good morning, Mr. Gambra. Thank you for joining us on Breakfast Daily. Yeah, good morning. All right. So um, I suppose you know the section of road we are speaking about here uh, in Suami, right? Can you give us an update as to are there any efforts being made to fix this gully that is developing and rapidly eating into the major road? Yes. Okay. Good morning again. I'd like to say good morning to your parents and listeners. What you said, there has to be a new replacing the existing culverts. The delay has been as a result of the use. So, Mr. Gambra, we're having a bit of trouble hearing you. Could you please speak up a bit? Yeah. Hello? Can yes. You hear me it's, it's a bit better. Yeah, I think we are going to speak up from your end. Okay, please, please go ahead. There's, there's a feedback from your end. All right, you please continue. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please go on. Yes, yes, I'm trying to explain that, yes, the, the culverts that exist at that particular section of the room have to be upgraded. You need a bigger size culvert. Now, the seemingly delay is because the uh, sister agency, the Geological Service Department, awarded it saying you could find the tunnel which will automatically include the culvert. Yes, so I think the utility awarded the contract to the mobilize quickly to do the same way. We have had in the past when we are going to take over the Upgrade of that particular in the recent plans within the first quarter of this year. Okay, Mr. Gambra, sorry, the, the line is actually very bad, but I just want to be clear. Did you say that another agency already has this earmarked as a project for them to work on? Yes, the Hydrological Services Department has. Hydrological Services. A year ago, mm. that was supposed to solve that particular problem. But once I used it to work, because of the delay, the value of everything is to that. Yeah, okay, so can we have some timelines? Because as you can see, and as you know, it's a very precarious situation. I mean, mm -hmm. people using this road are literally at risk every day of someone falling into the water, a lot of damage happening, people losing their lives. How soon can we see this rectified? Yes, I don't need to hear Okay, we're having a lot of trouble hearing you. I think what we'll do is our, our team will speak to you and get some details on this okay so thank you for joining us but um because of the technical issues with the the connection i think we'll just have to drop it here but um we'll get the information for our viewers that was francis gambra he's the ashanti regional director of urban roads he was essentially saying that the hydrological mm. hydrological services, services department, department mm. had earmarked this yeah. as a project to work on mm. but he says there's been some delays and so his outfit is also going to take it up we're trying to get a sense of timelines from him to see how long it will take for it to be rectified, but he seems to be saying that it's actually something that's but on yeah, their radar yeah. and they're going to work on it. So Hafiz, maybe later on you can engage him to get us some specifics. Again, the line was very bad, so we weren't able to, um, to continue to engage him. All right, Hafiz, we're coming back to you yeah, now. So now I see there's a gentleman standing next to you. Yes, so um, he's also a driver. He's someone who uses uh, this road. Are you concerned about this? Yeah, I use this road from few meters to the airport runabout. There is a bridge here, over here for, let's say, from 2014. Uh, they started from 2014 going back. Right now, when you look at the place, it nearly caused some accident. Even this morning, I want to have some accident over here. So we are begging to the, we are to the president to do something about it. It's, we have stayed for long, so we are just uh, appeal to the, uh, the president to do something about the bridge. I just appeal to him. Right. So, how worried are you seeing this um, as a driver, or what are your fears? My fears is that if the person is a new driver coming from somewhere, maybe from Burkina or somewhere, he can even get accident in front of this bridge. So that is my point. I've stayed for Kumasi for for long, but normally 
when I pass, I know here. So I doesn't face any problem. But this morning, I nearly face any problem here. It's because I know here, that's why I didn't face the problem. Go any, anybody com coming from Accra or direction from Ivory Coast or somewhere, if he doesn't know the road, there will be a confusion here. And right now, when the rain started, less than one hour, no vehicle can pass through airport runabout. So we appeal to the government to do something about that. So um, that is the concern by a resident. He, his concern is that he knows this road very well. His concern is also that uh, people who are not familiar or first-time users of this road would have a problem using this road and it would not be um, a, a better feeling or it, it should not be right for someone to just drive in and fall here. The assembly member is here for Ditcham, so electoral area. He yeah. has been talking about some uh, effort he has made for the past years or some few years ago trying to get authorities to fix this. Marakwa Badiba, City TV. Openika Semejo also. Problem is uh, started there. This problem, the uh, met me as I started since 2013, 2014. I was here for a long time. Even time we a problem we buy na minyambe here assemblyman cry for this area. And that time ni nina cry na mitu huwa na mo ah me kasa wa huu be brave, but oka yeshi bwada. And echina and echina. And nyame ya aduma de chama so for two abama me mami bete ki power and sono. Me tu huwa na mo pi. I started from my uh, uh, city mayor, uh, honourable Ose SCB and we bring so metrochro letters at the coin a co urban roads just say nana tapokumo a whole lot okwa the omobakan say omobaba just say kwain ya tu wan amon mpenifo bebre aba ba ba inspect road minister baho national nadmo director baho mpenifo bebre eno ya twon mama abasa ayiwe ho ah eh very dangerous medamina Ma kahun sema kahun sema kahun sema ma edu maybe kwa na means some S to the fact to say obeka obiyan few na asa ukasa ene ya yetinti but the ya ya mushishi ane say si yafu kwa we ya eni pa kwa we ya sumu wamo no aye very huge because a free Burkina Mali ni Niger from a embassy ko inkrani na ano aye kwa we sumu wamo nam. Inti aya kwa ya esuma mansai, omo amu free esiremu manti fi ebasi niko nkrani na ano aya saa kwa wia so, inti edubebi na aya huu ya kahu sama one Sunday bi aya huu nisa kiena ya ti ya nje sema ni nani se ya ya zdenya ni ya na ya si kwa ya efa, ama ya diabobi abekuha, nani ni se ya baba ya kwa ya ama ya inti na ya nje sema. Na nini na yamu no sana aye dada krebi ekoba se miye hivyo mu no na yese nadmo fu ene de abuano ebe gu horse ya tu de fast se se kano ed edimrika ten ten free plaza suru no e ba e hum ena hano swa ya inti no amu di gu horse se de ba ya kani ba no hu sabuano gu ha o be slow down but ano suno asa kwa kwa ye owo amena tu de fast se a crying on own said a coba. Pedestrians no sono and no and I'm who in Tiabasa. I know now I have very narrow in a way, sir. A car every so about what him recatent and ever and a nippano so nam who sana a born suguho in Tiacobasa. Other side is what cab a bonacono into which is which now I have very serious into later no a me bo and call for be pa said a bayer or move a pina a conchena ma a quenimo. Atrek akra said ya beya eni pa beti mi afan chena ka anso esa anho. Sisi ya as assembly member no, edia na uhu fe? Eh, me die, being an assembly man, said ya wawu ni muno, ya ya diya ni se, ya beya na bibi nko ya, ya beya kwen assembly no agwini, e si so se, weyi eni ya hao, na assembly no so beya na ya tu huwa na mwa, pa na ya sawu problem no. Ifi ya ura sampa ba ya kwa asa kwa ya mide, huwa sama ya den abono. Eh, ya na ni musem, Aya omani ni nani musem regional minister ni friend is a regional urban roads director on Instagram. They all know about this road. And idea we no nyesa ahangwa yekanwa semyo akwa mbiashara fanya ni nani musem 
Aye, next door to Kumasi International Airport. Aye, where ni Musa beba. Enti ya where ni Musa International Airport. Na peni bi every year so apa omo eba airport. Na amna we da wa. Unse aye very serious. Na last time me kahua sem se mi ni Musa ya where se se beside ya we no ebe ku peni bi ansa na ya tuwa na mo ana se se mi ni ya ya where because. A idea air course accident day in and day out. It's then a year we were say, Sad your way, a bayer at your mind. Because a year we say, even a year, you see, a year, they are my contract. Yeah, they are my contract. Now say, yeah, and my year, yeah, and come for young pet. And we are now a bobbing from a goom. Now I come now in at the hono. Opening us a baby, you know, hey, you know, I used to, where I just a slap, and you know, so I did the question, you know. I am very dangerous. I dare a moon a drone. I am very likely to be a bogum. And I dare a who made the name of Rasanka, Yan 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 Okrano, and Ka Yan Pet and Yabi, and now Bobby Mugumi and Yan Fell said the Bayer, who 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 in Oka so a betty. Copium say that contract, you know, a Bashar Sia Naka Yan Yasumadu. So that's the assembly member for the Dichemsu electoral area, mm. Justice Anochi. <laughs> he has been speaking about efforts he has made trying to contact the KME mayor, trying to contact the regional um, urban roads department engineer. Uh, that has not been done. His efforts have been uh, fruitless uh, to say. Uh, and, and then he is talking about an interim measure to be put in place here, even if the contract is not executed. There should be something to alert or prompt drivers who are coming on coming vehicles because from the DHMSU to Crowfrom area, coming down to Plaza to the airport runabout, it's a bit hilly and slopey. So those coming from Plaza uh, is very slopey and he says anything can happen and he wants an immediate intervention even if this problem is not being solved now, there should be an interim measure so that uh, they will avert or the authorities will try and avert any possible disaster that might occur here. Yeah, and, and Hafiz, um, like he said, I mean, we saw bits of the video earlier on when your, the camera panned to the back of the where you are standing. Um, it looks like the erosion is happening. So the road is there, the road surface is there, but the erosion is happening underneath the road, mm -hmm. you know. So. Um, it's a, I don't, where you are standing, I mean, I think you, you know, should be careful yourself, you, should, you know, where you are it's standing. A bit, yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was the concern of uh, Mr. Anochi. Uh, he was just talking about the slab we are standing on. Yeah, yeah and you know, it's a river. The erosion is eating deep inside yeah. the road. Yeah. Uh, yeah, deep yeah. inside the road. Look at and that. Uh, people are also it's taking eating, advantage of even dump there. Uh, damp refuse inside mm. where this the valley a, has been a, created. Mm. So, a disaster it is. Is. so you can see how yeah. serious, David, yeah, this yeah, yeah. Like situation. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it no, uh, it has even affected the culverts yeah. on which we are oh. standing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is a huge work and it, it, it's not just four-wheel drive that use this road. Mm. We have heavy-duty machines, mm -hmm. heavy-duty uh, vehicles or transporting this goods thing. to and from Tema. Mm. And this is getting very serious, and that is the concern uh, by residents of the DBG. This issue has been discussed severally on local media stations within Kumasi and Ashanti region. And for many who talk about this, even mm. when you come around here, people will tell you that they have talked about this issue not one, not twice. Uh, they have been talking about it yeah. and nothing has been done and that is the concern. Avis, thank you very much. Thank we really you, appreciate um, this update here. Uh, it's very important for the whole nation to see what is actually going on there and then also for the duty bearers. Um, this one, we're going straight back to the Rose Minister because apparently he's also been there before. He was, he was mentioned among the names of the people who have been there. Um, and I think it's important for us to get a finality, you know, a final resolution to this. It's a very serious situation. Yeah. We, we don't want, as the assemblyman was saying, that yeah. somebody prominent has an accident there, and then and all of a then sudden all of, yeah. he reacts. You know, but, you know, but why are we like that? <laughs> why are we like that?
you know, the so, states of this thing. Yeah. And, I mean, and you see, because you say, like I said, 2014 is a long time ago. Yes. We're talking about eight, eight years. years ago. So we've sat for eight years to and watch this kidding. thing happen, you know, slowly over time. But surely. It did not start like this. No. In fact, not, in fact, when it started, when it started. The, when it started, the assembly would have had the resources to actually fix it. Probably. Yes. But now, look, what we're looking at now is going to be very expensive to fix yes, and no, reinforce. Yes, no, no, It's a whole, you it's have to whole, cut the road. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You have yeah. to cut the road and fix, and build, rebuild the underneath. road. Yeah, yeah, rebuild the road. I mean, there's, there's because you know. Because the water underneath yeah. is just... I'm continue. sure at that point, some of the people who come and look at it, will come and look at it and say, look, this is, this is above our is pay it, grade. Thank <laughs> you. You know, and then they'll yes. walk away, go away because really that's what it is. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Well, that's, that was Hafiz Tijani, our colleague yep. in Kumasi, bringing us an update on that section of road yes. that leads to the airport, airport roundabout. From Swami roundabout. And the damage that is, and mm. uh, every day will get worse. Mm. <laughs> the, yeah. the sooner the better. No, I'm just praying that in the next two, three weeks, the roads minister mm. jumps on this because, listen, it will not take more than three months for a major disaster to happen. Look, the next rains, this, mm. this, it's the next rains, this is a problem. Huge yeah. Problem. Anyway, okay. we're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. One of the biggest news stories that we are still talking about is the proposed e-levy. Now, mm. this is an electronic transaction mm -hmm. levy that the government is proposing of 1.75% to be charged on certain electronic transactions. Well, this is 1.5 now. Oh, well, they say they are, they say, they say, they say, they say, they reduce it to 1.5, okay. Um, the minority says, no, that's mm. not enough. But essentially, Momo to Momo transactions, so mobile money to mobile money or Vodafone Cash to Vodafone Cash mm. or basically your mobile wallet transactions mm. tran will be charged. And also banking transactions yeah. from one account to the other or from an account to a Momo money account and vice versa. But they said that transferring from your account to your own account is yeah, exempt. Is, is exempt. Yeah. Now, the clar so the questions about that is, <laughs> how are they going to know if you've got a bank account yeah. and a Momo account? Yeah. And this is where all this, you know, your, your national ID number and yeah. everything is supposed to tie in. Yeah. Because as like you said, they are saying that if so, you own the yeah. accounts and yeah. you're transacting between, yeah. 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 they should be exempt so from example, the levy. So for example, I've linked... I think three of my accounts, my bank accounts, mm -hmm. I've linked them to my Momo. To your Momo. So, so you should be able to know that uh -huh. I'm moving money from, from yourself here to yourself to here. Uh -huh. And it's my own account. So they shouldn't now be charging you yeah. 1.5 or yeah, one, yeah. whatever they decide on yeah. the end. So it's, it's a big conversation, mainly because one, the scarce resources people already have, mm. it's like you're going to mm. tax us again. Yeah. And let's be honest, I mean, Momo transactions in particular have employed a lot of people. Look, yeah. the mobile money agents and vendors, it's business mm. for a lot of people yeah, in this yeah. country. Yeah. And, you know, if people are now going to say, well, if you're going to be charging me to conduct Momo transactions on top of the fees I'm already paying, I'm going to reduce my Momo transactions. Yeah. I'm going to withdraw my money from my but wallet. it's happened in many countries you know? as well. It, it's happened, where this, yes. Where this has happened. Um, I think, it will, I, I forget which country it was, but like, so, so one country... Um, I think I was reading this morning with Tanzania or yeah. Zambia, one of them. Wherever they've um, tried it, yeah. there's been a, down, yeah. a downturn. So you, over, like literally within the first month, mm -hmm. one quarter yeah. of the moment transaction, it just, it just goes down. off, right? So they immediately <laughs> halved their tax, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then it Gradually saw it coming back coming. up again. You know, so I think that it is something that the government shouldn't be bullish about. Um, we, you need to understand that um, no matter how desperate you are to raise revenue, mm -hmm. um, you have to understand that there's a balance between the, the people yeah. who you are taxing and your need for revenue yes. to, to do works to benefit the people that you are ruling. Exactly. You know, and the whole approach is almost like, well, we've run out of options, so this is it, and you've got to deal with it. And as you said, I mean, where's the compromise here? And have you really run out of options? Yeah. I mean, we had a pretty in How many months have we been going this? at this that the at government this, is not backing down from not that budging. flow? 1.75. They are really not budging, you know. So, I, I mean, this, 
<laughs> well, it's not going to go any way, away anywhere until mm. Parliament actually decides on this. And even mm. when they do, mm. we have to see the reaction from the public. Because yeah. whatever the decision is, if we do indeed end up paying some kind of levy, mm. then people are going to respond in kind mm. and say, Look, okay, this, this is, you've, maybe, let's just say, for instance, they say, oh, we'll reduce it to 0.5%. Yeah. People then say, okay, that's, that's <laughs> kind of reasonable. I can work with that. I think but so. You, you think, I, think, I think so. And then I, think I also so. think that, and I also think that, I don't understand the the the, the math, okay? Yeah. Um, where you say that, okay? So here's the thing. I'm looking at it from one side. I'm saying that mm -hmm. you're saying that you're 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 taxing the transaction, right? Yes. So if I move money between five people, all right, the same money. Yes. No, no, um, 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 no profit has accrued on the money. No. I'm just moving it from one point to another. So let's say you send a, you send 500 CDs yes. to your sister. Yes. Then you're charged 1.5 or whatever. Yes. Then your sister says, "Oh, I need to send money to our mother." Yes. Then she also one another 1.5. Yes. Then mom says, "Oh, I need to pay the the cleaning lady who came." Mm. Then another 1.5. Yeah. Then the cleaning lady says, "Oh, I need to pay my child school." Like like you're saying every single transaction 1.5 1.5 on the same money. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So oh. so so there's no no profit has no. accrued. No extra money has come from anywhere into no. the system. It's the same amount of money yes. just be moved around within maybe let's even say the same family, right? But taxes have been withdrawn yes. every time it moves. Yeah. That's problematic. It's very problematic. That's problematic. Not to mention that the money, the 500 you started mm. with, that has come from your salary, yes. which has already been taxed itself. <laughs> so you've already paid <laughs> tax on your salary. You've taken a bit of your net to put on your wallet. That one too is going to be, do you understand? Yeah. Like the, the, we know that, what do they say? There are two things that are certainties in life, death and taxes. Mm. So we know that, yes, we must pay tax. Nobody's mm. against paying tax mm. because we need that to develop our country. We need that for infrastructure. We need that to fix roads like what we just saw mm -hmm. in Kumase. But come on, mm. let's do this reasonably. Yeah. Let's really weigh the options and see how it's going to affect people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, our colleague Duke Mensapoko has a report on the whole conversation. Let's take a look. To begin processes for the passage of the electronic transfer levy on Friday night through futile meetings between the core leadership of the minority and the Minister for Finance ended in a deadlock. One of the proposals on offer at these meetings was a reduction of the rate of the levy from 1.75% to 1.5%. Despite the minority's opposition to this concession, government now intends to introduce this amended rate to Parliament. Dr. John Ampuntiakuma is a Deputy Minister of Finance. I can confirm that uh, upon consultations as the Finance Minister has been doing engaging the public, CSOs, FBOs, minority groups. Um, he, the, the government has now agreed to do 1.5% of the E levy. And then, um, of course, already before parliament, so at the consideration stage, um, all the changes could be done and, and, and then we'll go with the 1.5. But this 1.5 is also in addition to what the Turcos um, have agreed to do. So this would mean 0 0.25 in, yes. 0 0.25 out. out, and then a reduction to 1.7, 1.5. Uh, yes. Wow. Dr. Akuma also debunked suggestions that government is in a haste to pass the tax policy because it intends to collateralize the proceeds. Oh no, that's not true. <laughs> government indicated in the budget um, e-levy as one of the revenue sources for 2022. And so we need it. The year has already begun. You, you need those revenues to be able to spend. Uh, it's not for collateralization. It's, it's for um, um, government capacity to be able to spend. If you don't raise the revenue, you cannot spend. And once we have factored it into the revenue measures for the year, eh, it means that we have to be able to have, you cannot pass an appropriation to go and spend with no revenue measures. So. Um, I, I don't agree with the opposition on that. Despite the amended rate, the minority maintains its position on the bill. We want the finance minister to come to 0%. Uh, why? So coming to 1.5, it's, it's nothing. We are against the principle in the first place. Okay? If we accept the principle that we can be talking about the rates, 
we are against the principle. So once you are against the principle, the rate should be zero. So that is our position. I think our advice to the majority side is that we should wait until the speaker comes back. We want the speaker to decide that we will vote on the matter. And once that is done, the end result will be a decision of the House. And whether uh, the motion will be lost completely or the mother will carry, that is something that will be done after. But we want the speaker to be there. We don't want any of the deputies to sit so that what happened in 2021 should repeat itself. We don't want that. All right. So, as we said, the e-levy conversation will continue. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not anywhere near done with it. Um, the speaker will be traveling. Mm -hmm. So, as never that happens, yeah. when he comes back in Parliament, hopefully, what? finally, comes to a resolution. On yeah. It. But, yeah. I, yeah I, I, I just think that we shouldn't be um, intransigent about this. About you this, know, yeah. Um, uh, the, one of the headlines we read this morning, you know, we we'll use our numbers. I, I mean, seriously, let's yeah, let's stop yeah. playing those kind of games. It's, it's, anyway. it's not a fight of who you know. No, that's the thing. You see, so I think we need to depoliticize the, the whole thing Definitely. And, and just you know do what works best for Ghana. You know, yes. I, I think so. It's important. I agree. Okay. Well, let's segue now to a section of the Gas South municipality, mm. the Atia community says the lack of potable water mm. in the community has brought untold hardship to persons living there. Now, residents who depend on dug out wells in the community for water say that they are forced to join long queues at night. Yeah. Because the dug out wells sometimes don't produce enough water. So there's a crisis there during the day for the mm. residents. The central regional correspondent, uh, Calvis Tete, has more in the following report. Residents here burn the midnight candle waiting for drops of water to fill this well which is one of the few in the community before they get buckets of water for their homes although the community has pipes laid underground water does not flow through them regularly the situation gets worse during the dry season as persons living in that enclave struggle for water during this time of the season this well among many in the community serves as the only source of potable drinking water. Apart from Atia, that struggles for potable drinking water, other communities such as Jordan City, Peace Town, Azonto, Peace Farm, among others, also have similar challenges. City news sources say although water is pumped from the wager dam to these communities, the pressure is not enough to reach the homes of residents, making it difficult for them to get access to water. Some residents of the community spoke to City News about their challenges. Sorry, I it seems sorry to have o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. Oh, da, any time be when you betting, or so sorry, because she said, O Benya Biasa, Titan Buen, Yamano, sa, I finish so, in Yen Sunsi. Fitiano Pacran, and Pibi, sa, Minibi. In Tisiana, O B, Akofaka, Ariabu, Napolitan, Mamma Cosibi. Say, and so soon, and so young, and I'm so soon, and dear Bibia, in Tisan, so no, Musana, a hard jipa. The news team caught up with these children who were gathered by this well in the afternoon, patiently waiting for water to surface in the well before they fetch. This is because they won't have that time to wake up at dawn to fetch water, and they lament the impact of the lack of water on the academics. Nowadays, the water don't come. Sometimes plenty of people are here, so can't fetch any water to the house. Mm, and you have to, sometimes you have to wait. Yes. From, because from what we see here, the well is empty. Yes. So why are you still here? If you wait for a time, it's come in. Let her finish. So why are you still waiting? I'm waiting for some to come in, for us to face and go home. Okay. Sometimes we come here in the morning, in the, and sometimes in the afternoon. Okay. Assemblyman for English, Amanfrom, 
Bessie Squashy, tells City News about the efforts he has made in prompting authorities about these challenges, but believes it's an indictment on residents who live in these areas close to the Wager Dam, but yet struggle for water. Pipebone water is case at some places here. Um, the engineer spoke to me. According to him, the water is being pumped from Wager and the pressure is not that strong to uh, to send the water to Atia and those places I mentioned. But something else to be, uh, to be done, and that is what we are expecting. So he has promised that uh, they will do some um, rationing of the water. So Wednesday and Thursdays, Atia will get water, and then the other days of the week, they will send it to other communities where uh, water is scarce. All right, so that's uh, Calvert Stetter's report there uh, from the community of Atia. Ah, uh, the issues David. are plenty. <laughs> Imagine being close to, should we say, a water source, let's yeah. say the wager, and yeah. not yeah. being able to get water. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking at these school children who are supposed to get up in the morning yes. and be thinking about preparing for school, yes. what they're going to learn in the classroom, mm. interacting with their mates, mm. asking their teachers questions, but they still have to go and stand by an empty well and watch for water and wait. to come. Yeah. Watch, it's like we're watching grass grow. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's... It's, uh, it's actually exhausting to yeah. even think about. So I, I can imagine how they feel because yeah. just watching it is exhausting. Yeah. Because no one should have to go through that. Yeah. And imagine, you see the, 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 the young... The little boy there, mm -hmm. he's competing with your kids and my kids. Yeah, Those, that's that's the reality. That is the reality. That's what he's dealing with, Everything. and he's not even aware of what he's dealing with, what he's up against in the yes. world. Because this has become the norm for him. Yes. So he's had to adjust. Yes. To oh well, it's normal. It's, you wake up early yeah. and come and stand here. And you wait. And even if I'm late if for school, if you go and there's no water, you just you wait. just wait. Some will come. At that point, and then you will fetch. Because he also doesn't want to go to school yeah. without having a bath. A bath, yeah. Or exactly. brushing his teeth. Mm. Or, and not to mention the quality of the water, which was the other thing they were mentioning, yeah. that sometimes they fetch the water and there are little organisms in yeah. there and insects. And no, so but you saw the well. The water, you saw the well. Exactly. I mean, there will by all means be organisms in there. That's the well. Yeah. Yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Look, <laughs> well, we were hoping that we'll get a chance to speak to... Um, an assemblyman from the area or mm. hopefully that will happen i'm not sure but when you th when you think of the challenges people have to go through on a daily basis yeah. just to do the basics I, of survival I, I think that there has to be some kind of a logical way that we we operate our communities so i mean we we're talking the other day about the issue of um you know citing residences yes. in places before we before look amenities. at amenities go there right but what other option do we have you know in terms of um if we said don't go and site there m maybe overpopulation is going to be the other issue that we're going to have to start dealing with you know and and density issues you know and all of that so i don't know i mean it's it's a it's a real real difficult situation but we have um Pastor Squashy, who is the assemblyman for English here, a month ago, and uh, we're going to talk to him. Hello, good morning, Honorable. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank you. All right, so um, this situation um, with the water crisis in um, Atia and other surrounding communities. Um, what is it that the assembly is doing about it to relieve, you know, the members of the community? Oh, um, it, is, it is a problem to the community. Um, water is not flowing in their tap. Most of the pipes they have not seen water for some time. But uh, about two weeks ago, we met uh, water company, the Kaswa um, district. And the uh, engineer said, they are in charge of management of water within this community. But pumping water to the community is from Wigas. 
and because the community is expanding and population is increasing mm. the pressure is now low and so when they pump the water it doesn't reach the far ends of the community so what we have decided to do is to ration the water and this last week um i i saw it they would close the tap for some part of the community and then channel the water to other parts okay. so last week wednesday and thursday part of amount was locked and then it was connected to atia lantimos uh alpha joy uh, down to um, yellow container okay so that is um, what they have done now and they will be doing that every week uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Bashi, um, yeah. is this solution satisfactory for you as an assemblyman in the community? And how long did they say this is going to go on for before everybody can get water every day? Uh, it is not satisfactory at all, not at all, because um, the residents call me every day. Mm. My phone is always busy. Mm. Yeah, this is. Um, uh, an interim solution. Okay. According to them, they are expecting to get some bigger pipes from uh, their head office. And when the bigger pipes come, they will change some of the pipes so that water can flow to the far ends of my community. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Just sort of give us a sense of how long this problem. Uh, what is happening now in terms of the, the the rationing and the you know lack of water and all of that? How long has this problem been in your area? Um, the rationing started just this month. Okay. Yes, just this month. Okay. But um, water shortage at that to that place, the Atia area to Yellow Container, yes. the Sudan of Pista, and those places. Yes. It has, it has been there for a long time. Even uh, um, Peace Town, yeah. they don't have the main lines at all. Um, part of Yellow Container, and even Atia, American Farm, mm. those places, uh, there are they are places they don't have the main lines at all. So it, it is a, a very big project um, they are supposed to undertake here. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Persos Kwashi, we, we appreciate your uh, time with us this morning. Thank you for joining us on Breakfast Daily. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so that was the Assemblyman for English Amanfro. And um, basically, you know, uh, a couple of different scenarios. So some have never had water, okay, because there's no the extent to which the infrastructure goes has not reached them yet, mm -hmm. okay, which is part of the challenge we're talking about, as in you're going to settle in a place without mm -hmm. amenities. How does a settlement not only start but yeah. grow Yes, without, without the amenities? amenities. And yes. how is it even allowed? Yes, Isn't so that's... that's a country planning? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's part of the, the problem. So we've... Uh, we, 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 the, so the they're sprawl, playing catch-up. Yeah, we're playing catch-up. But you're playing catch up. It's, it's it's like it's like we've allowed the system to run away with with you know with, with from us, and yep. we are having to play catch up. Mm -hmm. You see, and it's affecting so many different utility service companies. Yes. You know because they can't keep up. They can't keep up. This was not in the plans to provide a whole community yeah. with water that was not initially planned for. Mm. And now they have to find the resources. Yeah. To do that, I think we need to be bold enough to, you know. Put those measures in place to mm -hmm. say listen wherever we find ourselves now no expansion no further expansion until further notice you know and literally yeah. clamp down on it in such a way that i mean the way ghana works of course i'm just talking it's not going to work <laughs> but you know ideally that's what that's what should happen should. you know where you can't go and set up any kind of makeshift structure, any I kind understand. of building, stuff. It's not, I mean, it, doesn't it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't happen anywhere. I mean, in any <coughs> properly <coughs> planned jurisdiction, you cannot just get up and no. say, okay, I'm going to start, or I mean, I'm, I'm going to build a, a, a development, like a yeah. real estate. Who 
just that. Yeah. In Ghana, we do. Yeah. A whole estate will be built. A whole estate. There's, there will be no There's no electricity. There no there's no water. There's nothing in the area. They are building an estate. And yeah. you ask yourself, mm. how? Mm. Who gave permission for that? Yes, we need housing, but not at the expense of running down our resources and, and uh, amenities and letting people scramble to try and uh, compensate for something they didn't even plan for. Yeah. Right. Then there are those areas also where they have water, but the 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 pressure, the pressure is, is low because the community Again, is expanding it's overspread you, you you've stretched yourself out too much you know and then we're talking about changing pipes from yes. smaller pipes to bigger pipes so they can you know trunk more water into the community um <clears throat> so there are all kinds of you know different scenarios and different situations here i wish we had the ghana water people so we can actually you know that would um, be a good um, one um, 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 ask them you know what their plans are yeah as far as that is concerned because even for because even for the areas that they currently serve <clears throat> mm. they have issues ranging from the turbidity of the water that yeah. they have to now try and clean up because yeah. of galaxy activities mm. to mm. not having enough having to yeah. still ration yeah you know to people not paying their bills so them you know yeah. not being able to, to raise enough revenue to keep operations the way they should yeah. so you've got all that to deal with you can't, how do you now think of serving new communities, communities that aren't that even supposed to be It's there? not your priority <laughs> at all. It can't be your priority. Anyway, I mean, it must be very painful to live close to a large body of water and not have water flow, you know, in your, in your home, in your pipe. You have the pipe, but there's no water. Well, um, these challenges and many more challenges the country is going through and experiencing. We do want to hear from you wherever you find yourself. Use the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Tell us what it is that's going on in your community. Where do you live? What's the water situation like? What's the electricity situation like? What are the roads like? All those things. We want to know. Um, the WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. Do send us a WhatsApp message. Send us pictures. Send us short videos. We would definitely want to hear from you, um, especially those of you who live in Perry, Urban Accra. So you're a little bit outside of, you know, the Accra city, um, like, you know, a man from that we're talking about um, as well. Well, Breakfast Day is going to take a short break. Up next is nutrition. Exciting conversations with our, um, our guest. And you don't want to go anywhere and miss any of that conversation that's coming up shortly after this break.